put your hand together and let us receive all the ways where, where will we because it's not Abuja it's not from Abuja this is from my part of heaven alright we, we are kinsmen we, we, we live in the same part of heaven please receive the incredible ministry of the one and only apostle Joshua Sermon Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pastor Larry, thank you. Thank you. Motakot is good to be here again. God bless you. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the word of God. I believe in his power to transform, his power to heal, his power to destroy the walls of darkness. I believe that he truly makes the way. And I believe that nobody shows up in his presence truly ready to receive and returns back to this This is what I believe. I'm a firm believer in the glory and the power of God. I know that when God shows up concerning a life, a destiny, and a family, it is impossible for you to remain the same. This is what I believe. I believe in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I know what it can do. I know what it will do tonight. So I want your heart to be opened when Pastor led me from outside and I saw the crowds of people outside coming in here, people worshiping, just pouring out everything. He said, no, it's impossible for God to leave this place. Listen, listen, forget about whatever challenge, just drop it aside. And I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus because he will surprise you tonight. Believe me. Who is like him? Lion and the Lamb.
By all means, receive restoration now. By all means, I declare restoration now. I declare restoration now. I declare restoration now. I declare restoration now. Of such 
Uh, tragedy was a man called the rich fool. Satan never stopped him from being prosperous. But he did not make wise use of his time. And when he built everything, he said, my soul find rest. And God said, all right, let me show you the value of time tonight. Tonight. I won't take away your wealth. I won't take away your intellect. I won't take away your business connections. But I will reduce your life in a moment by withdrawing time. I want you to appreciate this prayer I'm praying for you. Because for some of you, what the devil is programming is not stealing. When the Bible calls him a thief, you will be mistaken to think all he's interested in is your money or your influence. Those things don't carry so much value in the realm of the spirit. He's interested in your allegiance. He's interested in your time. When he can steal your loyalty and he can steal your time, he has defeated you. Hallelujah. Can I pray again now? Because there are many people based on the prophetic calendar of your life. You should not be in certain places doing certain things. But either because you got born again late or you were not open enough to come to a place where you were properly mentored. For some of you, maybe you are in ministry and every time you are in the presence of God, the revelations that you receive is that you should not be here. This is more than just progress. This is being at the epicenter of the will of God part time. Jesus said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh. When your night comes, no man, the only person who can walk in the night is God. But once it is night, men cannot walk again. So when God wants to keep you walking, he postpones night so that you will have your day. Listen carefully. And according to scripture, day does not come as through the chronological passage of time. Day comes by the presence of light and he called the light day and the darkness he called night. So for as long as God keeps feeding you with revelation, he's keeping you in the day where you have the power to walk. Hallelujah. Let me pray over your life. Father, I don't know who is a victim of his time being stolen either through ignorance, either by wasting it on activities that are not pro-kingdom. Here at this Activate Conference, I stand in partnership with the grace upon this house and I declare over you, let time be restored supernaturally. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will be surprised that by this simple prayer, God does not restore time by taking you back in time. He restores time by taking what you lost forward. That means he takes what you should have enjoyed and walked in yesterday because he has his Lord even of time. He will shift the activities to the future and make them happen. This is true. Dominion, even over time. Most believers do not appreciate the power and the value of time. Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, he says, There is a time for everything under the sun. That means things do not just happen because of desire, they must be in sync with timing. Hallelujah. Why do you refuse to give a five year old child your car key? It is not because he's not your child. There is something about time. And that time he matches his age. He gets to a level where even without demanding, it is foolish for you to start before a tree when it is not time for fruit. You are patient enough when you plant. You don't come demanding a harvest. You know that it subscribes to the law of time and seasons and the Is that true? A woman does not give birth and start flogging the baby and say, you need to walk and speak. No, you need to allow. But you cannot allow all the time. There is a time allocated. And in the name of Jesus Christ, let us speak to someone here. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. What God emanates from January till now, that was either because of lack of discernment, you did not know that this is what your life should be about. I pray for you, beginning from November till December 31st, in the name of Jesus, you will still achieve that by the Spirit. flexible enough to allow him you would be surprised that what happened just this two three minutes would have been the prayer and the fasting and the cry of someone lord is there hope for this tree that has been cut short and he says you come for tonight's service and god can interrupt a sermon for one person the bible says he crossed over to the other side not to preach in a crusade to save one man in gadara and return back he went to all the story of Jesus Christ the boat remember was for one man he said let's go to the other side you would think he was talking about all of them one man but that one man was equal to ten cities so when you see God determined that you rise determined that you walk in dominion he's looking beyond you there are nations connected to you are we together so we'll discuss the subject of dominion Wherever we stop tonight, we share the grace and we'll continue tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I thought very carefully on what to share. And um, I just thought to touch on a few things because the subject of dominion is very vast. This represents a very major part of the believers the framework of the believers understanding you must understand the subject of dominion to be able to reign and live effectively in life so in truth if you are to do justice to this topic it will need an extended time because there are many things that you have to cover as far as the subject of dominion is concerned for instance understanding the concept of dominion from a kingdom standpoint will take an extended period of time are we together and then now you need to understand uh, the dimensions of dominion i hope that we'll touch a bit about that there are different levels of dominion for instance the dominion that was given to the saints is called shared dominion there is absolute dominion and there is shared dominion we were not given absolute dominion absolute dominion would mean we can do without god and still be in control are we together the only person who has absolute dominion is god himself our dominion is derived from our relationship with him that means if anything happens to our relationship with him our dominion does not stand so our dominion is highly relational we will need god and depend on him forever are we together is someone learning already because when it has to do with the subject of dominion it's amazing how people just believe that it works so the concept of dominion then we have to understand the intent of dominion this is very important the purpose for dominion why would god go so far to take that risk and trust man with such profound level of authority and access to power hallelujah then we have to now look at the dynamics the dynamics of exercising dominion you see let me tell you the truth there is nothing more frustrating than knowing what should happen and not have the power to make it happen ignorance saves you the stress of emotional torture because you are not even aware that that possibility should happen but now enlightenment comes with a burden the press for execution it is dangerous to know what should be and not have the wherewithal to make it happen are we together that means that when your christian experience just stops with knowledge you are in trouble 
knowledge must be backed up by empowerment to now be able to defend the things that you know the believers experience will become a burdensome ritual if you are full of knowledge information that describes the possibilities of god and the possibilities of the saints in christ but not having the requisite level of power to make it happen for instance knowing that god heals and standing in the face of a situation that needs his power helpless knowing that god prospers and yet you find yourself plunging into financial depression again and again this conference seeks to add power to your knowledge so that you now will sustain the ability to not only propose things but to manifest them through understanding are we together so that when you say God is good, give us a chance to taste and see that the Lord is good. In this kingdom, there is an experience to the kingdom life. You can taste and see that God heals. You can taste and see that God lifts. You can taste and see that the victory over principalities and powers is real and is a fact. Hallelujah. I made up my mind as a man of God that... I would stay with God not only to get spiritual enlightenment to act, but to access the requisite level of authority and power that it takes to defend the speakings of God through my lips. Because I repeat again that you will truly be frustrated if all you have is just knowledge and information about what God can do. I write these things to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do do and teach in acts chapter 8 when you begin to read from verse 5 the bible says philip went down to samaria and preached christ unto them verse 6 the bible says the people gave heed in one accord it says hearing and seeing the things the miracles which he did they did not only hear he started with a message but eventually it translated into an experience so if I tell you God lifts, let it start as a sermon but not end as a sermon. Somewhere in that sermon, there should be a conversion from information to experience. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. That means you are hopeful as you learn because everything you are learning will become your experience. If we are teaching about the power of God over principalities and power systems and structures, you are excited to hear it because you are going to walk in it. It is burdensome and it is painful for you to just listen and say, wow, that's wonderful. Because you see, how do you help somebody who knows but does not have? The person who is in ignorance, you can console the person by introducing new information. But the one who is already aware, you are neither in the group of those producing results nor the group of those in ignorance. You are standing in a place all by yourself. Knowledge must be backed up by and with the power to demonstrate it has god spoken to you already so i made up my mind that when god brings light to me i don't just stay at the level of light wow this is wonderful lord the grace the grace the bible says and the word became flesh is that true it became flesh and it was manifest and we beheld his glory so when you say and read and learn that God prospers, by all means and for God's sake, may your life be a revelation of that possibility. Because you see, your results are also evangelists. They can preach. There is a sermon that only this evangelist called your result can preach. Hallelujah. And the audience is the territory. It is not only an individual that can be saved a territory can also be saved and that you are not the only evangelist your results have also been mandated to preach there is a kind of sermon only results can preach praise the name of the lord amen you won't believe that i've not even so let's see how goodness let's see how god will help us tonight in the name of jesus honestly wherever we stop we'll just pray this is what it means to learn the ways of god 
it takes a while to know God and to learn his ways when Jesus resurrected he had no time to celebrate his victory over Satan he called the students straight let's go to class we have 50 more days and the spirit is coming on you 40 days and then he left 10 days later the spirit will rest upon them the king's business requires haste so let me encourage you in the name of Jesus that beyond this conference you must cultivate an appetite to know God and learn his ways methodically and consistently this is what translates to your authority in the kingdom if we're together say amen, amen. Genesis 1 26 Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and God said let us make man in our image then he says after our likeness I don't want to go into the stories of making man in his image and his likeness because you need to understand the kind of intelligence that went into the build up of man he made man in his image and in his likeness if man were not made in the image of God dominion would not be possible are we together now the likeness of God means to function like God to function by speaking and doing that is the likeness of God he speaks and then he does two hands one head two feet and so on and so forth but the image of God is a spiritual quality hallelujah it is literally as it was in Christ and it says God made man and then the Bible says he gave them dominion over the fish of the sea now the word fish of the sea there has nothing to do with fish it's an ancient way of of explaining realms so he gave man dominion over the sea over the air over the earth and everything that creeps upon the earth are we together so the bible is very clear as to the fact that man was given dominion whether or not we walk in that reality is something else it's a, it's a different story but as far as god is concerned we have been given the capacity and the ability to walk in dominion the word dominion please write it down the word dominion um is the word sovereign control or authority sovereign control or authority the word dominion means the capacity to exert influence upon it means sovereign um, sovereign control it means authority it means the capacity to exert influence upon you are manifesting dominion to the degree to which you can exert influence upon hallelujah praise the name of the lord in psalm 8 the psalmist was contemplating he was talking about the faithfulness of god and he was he was vocalizing his contemplations as to the exalted position of man in light of dominion psalm 8 and verse 4 here's what he said please give us 8 and verse 4 what is man the preceding verses will say when I consider all of these the works of your hands what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 it says you have made him a little lower than angels the word here is Elohim you have made him a little lower than God you have crowned him with glory and with honor in fact i like paul's rendition of this let's go to hebrews chapter 2 please give us hebrews chapter 2 let's start from verse 5 hebrews chapter 2 please and verse 5 he says to none of the angels had he put in subjection the world to come that means he did not put them as caretakers he did not give them that kind of authority but in a certain place verse 6 now in a certain place he testified saying now he's making reference to psalm 8 what is man that thou art mindful of him nor the son of man that thou visitest him next verse please he says for thou hast made him a little lower than yourself than god thou crownest him with glory and honor thou didst set him over the works of your hands so man was set over the works of god's hands everything god created please listen to me the only thing higher than god is higher than man is god 
there is nothing else based on God's organogram of authority nothing should ever be higher than man not even the angels not even the cherubims the bible says the only entity that is higher than man by god's design is god himself are we together that is why even for the angels the bible says they are ministering spirits sent to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation just because they are supernatural and they have the advantage of uh bodies that have been glorified does not mean that they have dominion over man you need to understand this this is the exalted position of man let's finish that scripture hebrews 2 it says that you have made him over the works of your hands verse 8 it says thou has put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing say nothing he left nothing that was not put under him that means everything god created he put it under the feet of man but this is the tragedy we do not yet see all things this is the wow. project now wow. that in spite of all of this we do not yet see all things under him wow. so god has put everything under the feet of man he gave us dominion sovereign control he made us the bona fide caretakers of everything his estate his inheritance everything that god owns aside from himself he gave man authority and stewardship over it are we together now yes this is a very powerful revelation that you must understand and stewardship demands faithfulness first corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2 verse 2 says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful if it is true that we've been trusted with this dimension of kingdom authority and the capacity to influence it means that we are mandated to be faithful but please look up why do we then have believers who live very defeated life if it is true that the dominion concept was not a man-made concept why then are we victims of the vicissitudes of life victims of sickness victims of depression victims of poverty victims of demonic attack is that in your bible that in spite of everything that god did for man we do not yet see all things we do not yet see all diseases we do not yet see all troubles we do not yet see all situations and circumstances it looks as though man who is the zenith of god's creation seemed to have been reduced when god was going to punish the king in the book of daniel all he needed to do was to reduce his status to become like a lower animal and in god's mind that was a punishment to reduce man to become like the beast of the field he didn't punish him he still left him with the brain of a man but with the body of a lower animal and after seven years the king repented you see that now this is very very powerful there are many believers who have been brought down please hear me there are many believers whose lives continue to be a mockery of this dominion mandate that when we look at my life and your life there is nothing within it that demonstrates the superiority of the power and the authority of this kingdom when you look at many believers and read your bible you will almost conclude that god is a fraudster he is he's lying somewhere and he's defrauded someone somewhere please i want you to pay attention i'm teaching now because if we do not identify why this thing is not working in our lives we will continue to believe and hope in disappointment uh, hallelujah uh, dominion uh, you know why they loved and respected jesus when he showed up it's not really that they believed him but who else was doing what he was doing he said if he does not believe believe for the work's sake they had known that they were prophets you see these people were i hope you know that between malachi and matthew theologically speaking was over 400 years no prophet no miracles and there was nobody in existence at that time who was 400 years old imagine that in nigeria for the next 60 years no preacher no church 
So imagine the mindset of the generation that arises. This was the kind of generation Jesus met. So don't you think they had seen some miracles? No, they only had through history that men were mightily used by God. And at this point, they were already victims. Are we together now? Under the strong influence of Rome. Rome was the then world superpower. And then this guy shows up from the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey and begins to shout and say repent something is about to happen they say who are you they say i am elijah you are joking elijah we read about elijah we know about your mother don't make a fool of us we just know that this god somewhere seems to be a miracle worker we are used to slavery leave us to live our life in slavery and pain we are comfortable that we can barely get along then Jesus shows up. I like the synoptic account of Mark. It doesn't even start with any discussion. Miracles and a strange demonstration of his power from chapter 1. Healing everyone and everything he, he finds on his way. And they said, who is this? We can't say he's a prophet. But we also cannot say he's nothing. This is too spectacular. This man, when we look at his life, the only memory we have are the books, the archives of the prophets. But this is more than a prophet. What manner of man is this? They said that even the wings, we understand bodies. Maybe he's a doctor. Maybe he's, you call him the answer, but wind, even the wind obeys him. I thought he was just sick bodies. You need to understand the basis of your surprise. Who is this man? Who mentored him? Who trained him? Which school did you go to? You suddenly show up and disrupt status quo. He did not advise people. He was not interested in counseling. He changed the situation completely. Jesus comes for a meeting with a crowd of people like this. And then they bring five loaves and two fish, and he says, That's all right, don't worry, ask them to sit down. You know the risk to ask 5,000 people to sit down, expecting to receive. He could walk through the crowd and go away with both of his disciples. And he says, Don't worry, Andrew, don't feel bad. There is something I can do to what you have. You just sit somewhere and wait. Jesus, for you. And he broke the bread and began to share it and everybody ate. Do you know what it meant for 5,000 people to have a testimony in a meeting? Have you seen that happen in any meeting? There was nobody in that meeting that went without a testimony. In a meeting, if two people rise up now from the wheelchair, it is spectacular enough to make news in rivers. How about 5,000 people with their individual versions of the impact of one man going back home? Imagine when you read your Bible, you need to understand it from a cultural. Once you don't give it perspective, it will not bless you. Imagine after this meeting now. Let's assume that pastor decides to give everybody here hundred, hundred thousand. I'm calling an amount that is very serious, so that I get your attention. Imagine all that you know. In in narrating stories, you have people who will exaggerate it. In narrating stories, you will have others who will even talk as if they were the ones who shared the bread. Now imagine all of those versions. And the scribes and the Pharisees said, well, we can't keep quiet. This man is doing something that is becoming serious. Jesus demonstrated levels and dimensions of dominion. Then in John chapter 11, he received the news that his cousin was dead. And he said, don't worry, he's only sleeping. We'll go to wake him. He said, please don't make it for this one now. Not going too far because the government can be involved, the law enforcement agents can be involved. This is not about fanatism. Our lives and our families are on the line. You are stretching us too much. And when he got to Bethany, he said, Roll away the stone. What a man! This is not some angel coming. This is a man, Mary's son. And he stood there and said, Lazarus. Do you know why he called his name? If he did not call his name, that would be rapture. Because everybody would come out. He had to mention the name. Lazarus. Control. Listen. And the Bible says, he that was dead, 
he sent sounds into the realm of the spirit and it went with precision big in the body of Lazarus and brought him down listen listen at this point the disciples are confused they don't know is this a cultist don't blame those who called him Beelzebub that was the only thing they knew he said this guy cannot he can cast demons out of this has to be by Beelzebub because at that time they practiced what is called Akiza not exorcism they could not cast demons by what name so you would meet a medium to conjure spirits and then ask the spirit what it wants and then satisfy the sacrifices you pacify the spirit for the victim to rest only to come back we still practice it today in many 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 especially non-christian sects what they do is occultic pacifism not deliverance now they met a man who was not negotiating with the demons out and that was it they said no this man you are this is Beelzebub by the prince of demons look at the kind of trouble Jesus came to create the disciples were happy because finally redemption seemed to have come for the people of God are we together now went to Peter's house and saw his mother-in-law sick with a fever he just held her Said, let's go and prepare something for us right now. You're fine. He saw a fig tree and did not have figs and he spoke to it. Nothing comes out of you again. I'm sure the disciples have pride, this man. Except that by the next day it had withered. It didn't fall. It withered as a testament of authority. What kind of man is this? So you must appreciate the disappointment they had when Jesus gave himself to be king. They could not reconcile this invincibility. This man now was led naked. Finally, no child has been discovered. The disciples were angry. They left. But on the third day, on the third day, the Bible says the angels rolled away the stone and sat on it. And Jesus came up with authority, no hurry at all. Why do you rush when you have dominion? He came out exalted and glorified. Now watch this. And he reminded the disciples again. He said, All oh, hail, as my father has sent me. With the same pattern and equipment and authority. He says, So send I you. As my father, he didn't say I sent you. As my father, you need to study how my father sent me. He said, So sent I you. He left us this mandate. Please listen, ladies and gentlemen. He gave us authority, he gave us power, he restored dominion. You need to under let it not just become a preacher's sermon. For as long as this remains as a sermon, believe me, your Christian experience will be frustrated. It is not a sermon. It is true based on the integrity of the word of God. He left nothing that was not under his foot. But we do not see all things. That's the purpose of this conference. That one sentence. To examine why. That on one hand the Bible tells us that we are people who should command authority and dominion. And yet we do not see it happen in our lives. Why do I pray for the sick and then they are not healed? Why do I speak over someone? How many believers here, if you are to be honest with me, I came to challenge you that you sit down and agree with a brother or a sister concerning something in their lives and say the name of Jesus, let's agree. And you agree and absolutely nothing happens. To the point that we are so used to the word not even working. It's very normal. There is no emergency. It's not enough for you to go for a retreat. I'm used to it. I've spent all my life seeing the word of God not work. Occasionally it may work and I'm not sure if it's the word or science or just time. Hallelujah. Let God be true. Let God be true. 
and all men liars. How many of us have prayed for our families and we have declared supposedly by faith in the name of Jesus, turn things around. And if you are to be honest, nothing has changed. Listen, if you are not prepared to be honest, just wait until I'm done. Then we share the grace together. But if you came angry in your spirit and opened to say, there has to be an explanation. I need to know why this thing is not working. Hallelujah. Mommy, pray for me. I'm suffering from headache. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you. Be healed. And the boy returns after two weeks. I don't even know what is happening. I say, it's all right. Something is wrong. Look at Jesus. When Jesus showed up in your house, you will begin to rejoice, even if he had not said anything. Because you pity anything that is not him in that house. It will for sure be dealt with by that power. What is wrong? We do not yet see all things under his feet. The company was going down and we prayed. Some even sowed seeds. And we said, Lord, we take advantage. We are kings and priests. And the company did not hear you. But watch what the wind did when Jesus spoke. He said, Shalom, once. And that was it. If it is either he lied to us or there is something we are not getting. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. When he met the man with a legion of demons, the demons were pleading on their own accord. We know you will cast us. The issue, what we're asking for is not that we're not going out. It's just help us choose where we go to. That level of authority that is registered in the realm of the spirit. We know we are going. The only thing is we are pleading for mercy to enter the swine. And he said, go. One word. But how many spirits have latched onto people's lives and conditions and we pray, we even add fasting and they wait till we are done with the fasting then they, they revalidate their presence. Listen, I'm only challenging you tonight because God wants to do something potent. Even if it's in five, ten minutes. We do not yet see all things under his feet. Money runs away from us. Influence runs away from us. Demons run to us. Are we together? The wrong things run towards us. How many people, how many people in your life and in your family would be better Christians today and more determined believers if they had seen the dominion power of the Spirit walk through you? Imagine how many people, look how hard our preaching is today. You may have heard me say it in a few meetings that I've had in recent times. Imagine a crowd of people like this inside and outside and then you make an altar call and only two people come out. It's a lie. It's impossible to have only two people who are yet to meet Jesus Christ because God acts daily as many as should be saved. But it takes the superior power of the Spirit. I'm saying this because this is what has led to the concept of celebrating Christianity and celebrating a few people who seem to have a semblance. It looks like they are they are not yet there, but at least they are better than where I am. And then we create shrines around them to the detriment of the advancement of the body. This mandate was given to all and sundry. And if we come into that comprehension of it, imagine the invincibility of the church. Imagine that which we will be able to do. A child returns from school and is not doing well and the mother says let's pray son I am your mother in the name of Jesus I declare go and do well and he will go back and still fail then the child says don't you talk to me about Jesus again I gave you five years of my loyalty he did not prove himself let me go to an app that seems to give me instant results the implication of not walking in dominion is that we are going to lose a generation because there are alternatives now. When we started, there were no alternatives. But right now, there are alternatives that produce a semblance of result, even if it is virtual reality. Are we together? Dominion is powerful. The woman who was at the well when you read, the Bible tells us that he comes to meet this woman at the well and then he begins to talk to her about her life and she said, I perceive you're a prophet. How did you know I'd been with five men and that the sixth one is not even my husband? 
I perceive you are a prophet. Let me now share with you something that is in my heart and they brought the concept of worship. The Bible says at the impact of Jesus in her life, she left everything. You know what it means to re, to reorder, to give you a new orientation in one encounter. She left everything and ran to the city and said, Come see a man who has told me everything I did. It was so compelling the people came. They came as critics, but they came all the way. The Bible says when they came and they heard him speak, they said, Now we believe. Not because of what you said. We have seen it for ourselves. When the scribes and the Pharisees were shouting in the afternoon and trying to disprove everything, one of them, maybe representing a few of them, Nicodemus, he said, no, I went to school. I know that corporately we are fighting this man, but it's out of jealousy. You cannot disprove the potency of the power of God. And he smuggled his way to Jesus in the night. That discussion is what birthed John chapter 3. It was not a crusade. It was a discussion with a man who was desperate to find answers. He came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. John 3 and verse 1. For no man can do these signs and wonders except God be with him. Jesus looks at him and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he said, this is surprising. At this age, will I enter back into my mother's womb? And he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, verse 5, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, that he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And he began that discussion that led to verse 16, where he says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have this life. Believers, please listen to me. The world today and the program of God is at the mercy of the saints who will arise in power and authority and dominion. Restore that dominion mandate, that power. If that does not happen, we are in trouble. Let me teach on one more verse and then we'll end for tonight. Is that fine? Psalm 24. There's an army rising up. You're that army, you are rising now. There's an army rising now. Build your chain, break every chain, break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an arm rising now. There's an arm, they are rising. There will be a generation that will have this answer. There's an arm, there will be a generation that will have this answer. Please hear me. For some of you, you have spent time praying and fasting. You have spent time in consecration to say, Lord, even if I'm the first person you will raise from my family, there has to be someone with an answer to this dominion deficiency. There has to be someone who can finally ask this question. Three, four generations have asked this question. There must be an individual that will come with answers. Answers more than sermons. Answers more than conferences. Answers more than conventions. The world is crying for answers beyond activity. Psalm 24.
and we'll do Psalm 24. Please write this down. There are two major aspects of meaning that we need to understand. Dominion has jurisdiction. There is what dominion is concerned with. You need to understand this number one. The first aspect of dominion is creation and manifestation of divine resources. Please write that down. The first jurisdiction of dominion. The power of dominion is for creation and the manifestation of divine you are, you are walking, walking to the union of the degree to which you can create and manifest divine possibilities. If divine possibilities can be created and manifested in you and through your life, life there is a gentleman who is here, 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 so when so we tell me a pastor that we are walking in dominion, dominion, we don't need to talk about the church. Show me the supernatural possibilities and the intelligence of our system in part from a realm that is falling in the Creation. Jesus, the epitome of your dominion, was never concerned about what was there because of the beginning of God. Are we together? Are we together? Yes, sir. Fear is it's proof that you are aware of insufficiency. insufficiency. Ah, Listen carefully. If, if I need one million dollars right now, and I do I not have, have it in my pocket or hand, but, but I have it in my account, account. will I be afraid? No. Because, because I am aware of, of the limitless supply. It is only that it has been put in my reach. And, and because I am intelligent and aware of the make me draw. Are you seeing that fear is an explanation? Fear is a sign that you understand that the dominion is not done that. You are aware that you are all that you have is all that you can see. And you do not have the intelligence to transport resources to make it happen in your life. And you are going to say a hundred thousand as a gay save a million. The moment you receive an alarm from five million, what happens? The beggar stops. You don't have to tell him when you send an alarm. All of us are confident. The money is not you, but it's in a place that is accessible. Please understand this. I'm trying to be as simple, forgive me, I'm, I'm trying to be as simple as possible so that you will get it. That the first aspect of dominion has to do with sustaining the capacity to create and manifest divine possibilities. And that is based, it is predicated upon the consciousness that all that is with you physically is not all that you have as an inheritance. That whatever is with you is only a token, an expression of the vast and the limitless possibilities. You need to know this and Jesus was with men, five loaves and two fish. He said, no problem. I have food, I have bread, I have all of this. Even if it means sending a fish. Where the fish got the coin is none of your business. The most important thing is that it is there and needed when needed. Number two. The second aspect of dominion, are you ready now? Is for correction and restoration. The second aspect of dominion is the ability to correct anomalies and the ability to bring restoration. These are the jurisdictions of dominion. So when you are talking about dominion, it is not a vague terminology. You are talking about the power and the capacity to, number one, create and manifest. Number two, correct and restore. Dominion, the ability to correct anomalies. Now, back to my example with money. If you send a child, and say, and buy me buy something of 10,000 naira, and say you are a millionaire, genuinely, 
If that child makes a mistake and buys something wrong, you just correct the person, but it's not a cause for concern. Why? Because there is an endless supply. There is capacity to correct it again. Who seen that this man was born blind? Him or his father? Jesus said, that's not the issue here. There is power available to correct that anomaly. You are walking in dominion to the degree to which your life becomes a correction. You can use your life and the power of God invested within you. This is truly where compassion stems from. It is not just from love alone, but the ability to go out of your way and correct anomalies. You are a blessing to the degree to which you sustain the power to correct things. This is where the ministry of healing comes from. This is where the ministry of deliverance comes from. This is where the ministry of prophesying breakthrough. You are using the power of God to correct anomalies and to bring restoration. So let's recap very quickly. You need to understand this. The believer only, the believer can be said to be walking in dominion only if these two conditions are in place in his life. Number one, that you sustain the capacity to create and to manifest supernatural possibilities that means you have mastered the intelligence to transport realities from outside this realm and make them happen in this realm why do we call God the great and all-powerful God because Jesus was transported from the realm of the spirit and he, and through the womb of a woman and he showed up here hallelujah powerful and then number two, to correct, to correct, correct bodily conditions, correct situations. And someone will meet you and say, Apostle, I wasted 10 years of my life, maybe drinking and smoking, living a riotous life. And you say, don't worry, there is the ability of the spirit to correct that situation. Look how much of a blessing you will be when you can correct situations in people's lives. I've not been able to have a child for 10 years. And he said, don't worry. Why do you run to a doctor? Because he has a semblance of this, even though scientifically. I'm not able to take in and the doctor says, don't worry, there's something we can do. There's still a way around it. He will first examine the extent of the condition. Then with the intelligence he has gotten through study and experience, he now begins to find a way. Medicine has perfected the art of maneuvering the human body. There's heart bypass, there's kidney transplant. All these things are the scientific alternatives we have while we are learning the authentic way to release the power of God. But make no mistakes about it. There is the one who can open without surgery. There is the one who can put parts without having to remove another person's parts. Now, it's an uncomfortable message, but open your heart to receive. Except you do not believe in this. Dominion is more than a sermon. It's a call in the spirit. The ability to correct. I have seen a bit of the miracle working power of God as I travel from nation to nation. I have seen God literally by the privilege of God's grace. I remember one, one story that will impact my life forever is a whole family that was healed of HIV. Whole, not one person. Everybody. How do you give that kind of testimony? It's a different thing that one person was healed, but a whole family. Because it was not caused by sickness. I remember many years ago, I was preaching for Khan in Shiroro. Shiroro is a place in Niger State. And I saw a very strange occurrence, Pastor, that people, women would give birth and then become deaf and dumb. I don't know if there's a medical explanation, but I sure know there is a demonic, I mean, activity there. Yes, they would give birth and something would happen to their hearing. I was praying on the crusade ground and many pastors were smuggling their members who had that kind of condition. When you see a widespread pattern, it's no longer a medical issue. There are spirits that sustain the continuity. But you see, knowing the idea is not enough. Do you have the power to correct? I'm saying this because, help that gentleman please. I'm saying this because there are people who are leaving this place tonight and saying, I found the keys. I came for Activate Conference and I was given a key. Mama, don't cry again. I found the key. I've unraveled the puzzle, the hundred year old puzzle as to why this family does not seem to rise. 
Nane Kepero Ziatabara Hallelujah. How do you explain that someone is sitting on a wheelchair with legs that probably do not even have any strength? Maybe the out of joints or someone holding a crutch, and in a moment the person stands up, supernatural strength, he throws it and he's walking. What happened? Dominion. You are you have imposed. What manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him mention what did not obey jesus mention one thing men obeyed him demons obeyed him the wind obeyed him money obeyed him systems and structures obeyed him the material world obeyed him and he said as my father has sent me so send I you but the altars in your family have refused to obey you but finances have refused to obey you yes by faith you can say they are obeying but listen I want you to get results the situation in your family that has created conflict didn't you pray didn't you fast why has it not changed it seemed to veto your spiritual activity as though you are not there. Listen, I'm, I want to show you how this thing works. Otherwise, you will keep claiming to your pain. You know why a lot of people are leaving God now and church? Because they will first act and pretend for a long time. One day they say, listen, I'm tired of this. I can't wait forever. No. There is a moment where faith should manifest, but the moment is not forever. hallelujah yes, everything obeyed him everything obeyed him the winds obeyed him the waves obeyed him death the last enemy to be destroyed obeyed him satan obeyed him angels obeyed him men obeyed him when we worship him it's not just a church thing Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Listen. Help that lady, please. Do you know this was my experience for a very long time? when i started out with god I, I i went to church and i sat down i would see sincere loving men and women of god preach and say so many things that god could do and yet uh, people were surrounded with the same situations they were talking about in the bible and we would sing hymns and share the grace and you could see disappointments on the faces of people i said god this this can't be this way and when it was time for god to send me i said please Lord, I love you, but do not send me with a sermon alone. No, no, no. I need more than a sermon. Moses was wise. Moses said, I've gotten the sermon, but I know who Pharaoh is. Don't you send me to go and stand before Pharaoh with a sermon. Who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? And what will be the proof that I met him? I made up my mind that I will press to any degree till I find answers why people are not blessed when you are under the influence of the spirit we talk about the Holy Spirit we sing about him we even cry and then it seems like he's not coming well come on please who is lying now Lord we love you we are you are welcome what kind of stranger is that that you keep telling him you are welcome and he does not come even for visitors when you say you are welcome how many times do you say you are welcome for them to come please hear me let me speak to you 
except you want to be frustrated this is the conference where you must say i will not be silent till i find answers lord i must find answers i came to house on the rock here in portacot the lord put his choice servant to put this meeting together to for god's sake provide answers man of god look at the secret frustration eating you up in ministry you love god you are a man of integrity of character you have kept all the principles you know yet there is no increase i know we laugh and just say by faith this thing is not working let's be honest and get real answers Number two, the capacity to correct anomalies. He said the enemy has done this. Now that you know, what do you do about it? Dominion is not being aware of what Satan has done. Dominion is the ability to now correct it. Light does not sit down regretting what darkness has done. Please look up. Let me ask you one question. Am I wasting your time? Listen carefully. If a room has been dark for 10 years with no light and then another room has been dark for one year with no light and then another room has been dark for two weeks with no light then another room has been dark for 10 minutes with no light if you own the light in all the rooms which one will come on first you mean it you mean the one of 10 years the light will not even respect the fact that darkness has been there a long time that at the instance of light the factor of time and its limitation no longer matters now i am not telling you what you don't know i am only telling you what you have not seen it has not happened in our lives we are not in ignorance let me tell you what we really lack in the body of christ is not knowledge i submit to you never has there been a time in church history where there is such such an avalanche of divine knowledge god has helped people across this nation africa and the world to bring dimensions of kingdom truth but the missing link is that graceful performance so we say so many things then when the stakes are down we give all kinds of intelligent explanations and smuggle our ways out of that meeting. The sick still heal, still sick. The oppressed still oppressed. I say it again. Imagine what happens to your family members. Forget about the crusade ground. Let's talk of your family. That you love so much. Imagine that you have the ability right now to run home and say, Mama, I found the key to that diabetes. Give me two minutes and you are waving this goodbye forever. Imagine that you can go and say you were a pastor, you served God for 30 years and there is no beauty and glory in your life. But I have come with an ability from heaven as the word says. Many of you are not bad. It's just that you don't have the capacity to help people the way you want to help. So you stand and say, I wish. Have you heard that statement? This conference has come to change it from I wish to I can. No longer wishing. I wish I can help you. I wish. No. He that did not spare his own son, but gave us everything, shall he not freely with him give us all things to enjoy. Hallelujah. Let's do Psalm 24. Thank you, Jesus. Every time I pray to God, I don't pray as a preacher, saying wonderful things I've done. I, I gauge myself based on the benchmark and the reference of Jesus. And I challenge myself and I say, there needs to be more. The world is tired of our speaking, tired of our revelations, tired of our Greek and Hebrew. The ratio of performance to speaking is almost one million over one. He 
just going to do verse one for tonight number two the fullness thereof number three the world number four they that dwell therein please keep that scripture there these are the four dimensions of dominion for you to walk in dominion as far as the cosmos is concerned these four elements must be captured in your experience number one dominion over land number two dominion over the resources number three dominion over the mindset and the belief systems within a territory number four dominion and influence over men I hope that we'll be able to deal with this tomorrow because every time a spirit comes to put people under bondage these are the four areas satan will want to capture land satan will want to capture the resources within a territory satan will want to capture hijack the mind control system within a territory remember the entire psalm 24 was an expression of the lordship and the dominion of the christ he starts by listing the earth is the lord's and then the resources and then the mind and then the people that dwell therein are we together so don't tell me you are walking in dominion and the land the physical land in a territory runs away from you there has to be a representation of your dominion in land number two there has to be a representation of your dominion through the abundance of resources resources number three the mind control system, the ability to influence the thinking of people within a territory. This is what discipleship and the sound communication of doctrine seems to do. You are introducing a superior belief system. Are we together now? Because the law is that these signs follow them that believe. So everything you believe has physical signs that should follow. When trouble and pain is following you, it's not just following you because of demons. There is a belief system that the signs are coming in honor to. So you drive the signs by changing what you believe because the signs follow them that believe. There are signs that follow them that believe failure. There are signs that follow them that believe Satan. There are signs that follow they that are victims in their minds. And then he says, they that dwell therein. Your dominion is not complete until you are able to influence men. In the multitude of men is a king's honor. Is that in your Bible? So every time we win more souls to Christ, we are establishing the dominion and the lordship of Christ within that territory. One time Apostle Paul was going to preach and he was afraid and the Lord said, don't worry, I have many men in that city. Your strength is the presence of many people who are obedient to the faith. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. I came here with a burden. I came to share this burden with you. That God is calling on us beyond church, beyond religiosity. You may not understand or place value on this message until darkness strikes your life and your family. Then you will see the necessity. For as long as they've not told you you have cancer or diabetes, is you will not need to understand the power, the corrective power of dominion. Until the day, you see, you do not need light if you are in the day. You need light in the night. And according to the law of time and chance and seasons, both night and day happen to all men. So you make sure you have the key to keep your light before darkness comes. 
you are not afraid of the night because there is a generator or there is the power holding company supplying light in your house so when it's seven o'clock you don't you don't cry all you need to do is put on your light and that survives the night and you off it by day you have lived like this since you were small till today that is what you should do spiritually when the night comes you don't need to be afraid the same thing you do in your house is what you should do to your life for some of us there is no room waiting for night it's too risky the bulbs remain on forever it does not matter what happens because there are climatic conditions that can change and the cloud can make day to look like night so we are not ready to have that risk it remains perpetually on hallelujah i've been a victim of sickness i have been healed of sickness i know what it means to be healed of sickness i know what it means to be healed to be to be delivered from demonic oppressions i know what it means to rise above and beyond a background where nobody should rise beyond certain heights i'm not talking to you about cunningly devised fables i know that the power of god works you can create possibilities in your life you can transport resources out of this realm into this realm that can be seen by all and sundry hallelujah but we do not yet see all things under his feet but we do not yet see all things under your feet we do not yet see your joy complete there are still areas that have refused to answer are we together let me charge you by the message of God. Do not miss any part of this conference because I will take the time to teach you and show you dominion systems. What are the forces that must be activated in a man's life for him or her to work practically in dominion? Because the Bible gives us an opportunity to see the disciples free dominion and now not post dominion now at least we saw them make attempts remember when jesus went up the mount of transfiguration they took matters in their own hands and attempted managing the issue of an epileptic patient they were disappointed publicly and that was a blessing because it helped us to see their failure so we can start from that journey what suddenly changed that the shadow of peter was healing the sick what suddenly changed that this man who did not have anything could speak and nations will open what suddenly changed that is the question they'll be asking you what changed i said last week we prayed with you and nothing happened but right now you just prayed and in five minutes something happened what changed and you will tell them i came for activate conference but have you not been coming every year it's only that this time around i came with hunger and God was ready to satisfy that hungry soul. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. If you believe that God is in a place, you must know he's in a place. It starts with believing, but it does not end in believing. It ends with manifestation. If you believe God is all-powerful, it must show in your life. If you believe God prospers, somewhere in the journey of your life, there should be a capture of the riches of God. Hallelujah. Man of God, God is speaking to you that your ministry will be ten times more impactful if it translates from a realm of sermons alone to a realm where the things that you communicate there is grace from heaven you can't fake this thing no dominion the ability to create and manifest the ability to correct and restore i'm saying this because that is what is happening to someone right now while you are standing for many of us creation is happening manifestation is happening when saul met with samuel samuel did not have to prophesy and say donkey return back the donkey knew what happened to him at that contact he 
people bring in their atmospheres and there are possibilities that happen in certain atmospheres hallelujah my apologies for taking the time now let me pray no, don't lift your hands i will direct you on what to do hallelujah no shouting no saying anything please just stand i want to pray and these people that the power of god is coming on right now please listen carefully listen these two people or this these people not two people that the power of god is coming on i want to tell you why it is happening so you don't just fall and shout for nothing listen carefully the power of god is coming on these two people to do two things number one everybody the power of god is going to come on now is a sign that there is a prophetic mandate on your life for your family and for those who are looking up to you this is what god is telling me right now i declare by the authority of the kingdom men and women there is there is a mandate from the spirit oh that anointing will find you i assure you it's, it's not this is wherever you are that means there is something help that protocol in the name of jesus christ there is a mandate upon your life oh you may not know it but it is so young and old male or female maybe no one has told you this this impartation and activation is already prophecy to your life that god has been saying i am waiting for you help them please no shouting let me just pray for you the ability to create and transport realities from the realm of the spirit and make it manifest here and now remember it's beyond falling down falling down is an elementary spiritual level very very elementary we're talking about the ability to be able to effect potent changes hallelujah number two i want you now to help those who will start running out please whether you are an usher or not i want you to help them because i've declared speed we're wrapping up but right now by the power of the holy spirit people will start running out now it is a grace for speed that is coming upon them help them please just bring them out gently you don't have to so they don't enjoy themselves Shabarekatoski, please help them. Help that lady. Someone just hold them. This is the place of encounter. To me, what you want. This is the place of surrender. hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord i'm only acting as the spirit of god is revealing you will be surprised i'm still praying for speed that if there is any spirit that has tied people down that will not release you no you must go i'm saying it again may that grace for speed find you now find you now in the name of jesus i speak by the authority of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ hallelujah 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 now this set of people i'm praying for i want you to bring them out please very quickly i want you to bring them out the ones i'm about to pray for now i stretch my hands and i decree and declare the lord is telling me that there are spiritual graces and giftings that have been dormant within people and that fire is releasing you right now i want you to bring those people out i stretch my hands by the spirit of god in the name of jesus may that grace be activated it's long been there but prophecy is calling it forth please whether you are an usher or not help those under the anointing and you bring them out hallelujah please bring them out very quickly so we'll wrap up i activate it by the spirit bring them out no more weakness in the name of jesus 
no more weakness by the spirit of god no more weakness what do you do my friend can i pray for you in the name of jesus christ drink of this well may you be powerful may you be great no no you don't need to come in the name of jesus i pray for you may that hand rest upon you please help them help them in the name of jesus may that hand rest upon you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ over families i just saw like a dark cloud being lifted over families this is what i saw in the spirit right now that grace is coming on you in that cloud from this night many people will begin to testify age-long situations i'm declaring it by the authority of the kingdom i bring you power from the throne in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god families that that cloud that siege that has sat on families i declare be lifted be lifted be lifted over ministries be lifted in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god you if it means bringing the entire river state if there is no space if it means to sit on the roof like they did in the bible please stay there tomorrow i'm going to take time to minister i want to show you the systems of dominion i give you a guarantee by the intelligence and the integrity of scripture that your life will shift in a way that will surprise you in the name of jesus christ you know a man of God in this city who is hungry and whose heart is open for a change. Please invite them to come. This is no longer just a house on the rock program. It is God visiting a territory. Do not allow someone's hunger to go and thirst to go unquenched. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I just saw a crown fall on the ground and the Lord is saying let that crown be restored back listen your crown is a symbol of your authority and for some reason there are people you have lost it the level of glory that was once in your life right now your life is as though it's Ichabod things have just people look at you and it's almost like you're a memorial people just say my god i used to know days when this man was like this can i speak over your life before we wrap up the same vision i saw i saw the crown fall but god is able to put it back right now i decree and declare 
Embracatos, help them please. I stand by the power of the word of God and the ministry of the prophetic. Help that man please. In the name of Jesus, let your crown be restored now. Your bishopric, I decree and declare, let it be restored. Your relevance in Portacot, your relevance in the South South, in the name of Jesus, your place in life and destiny. I decree and I command, let your crown be back to your head. O king, O royalty, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for tonight. We decree and declare by the spirit of the living God. That you will help us to be fulfillments of your desire as far as dominion is concerned. The Bible says, but we do not see all things under his feet. May this be the generation that will rewrite that narrative. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the spirit, by the power of the word, the investment of God's mercy upon our lives and our generation, may God grant us the grace to ascend to be men and women of stature to ascend that dimension in the spirit where we become proof producers giving glory to Jesus may the Lord bless you and for all who are in front here I stretch my hands and I decree and declare let this be the beginning of a new season there's one of you here there's a spirit that has been tormenting you I command that spirit to go now I just saw this in my vision in the name of Jesus let let her go by the spirit of the living God I decree and declare for the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty we establish liberty by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name God bless you